Little in the News. Leaders of the National Consultative Front, NCF, a frontline political pressure group, have dissected, dissected the state of the nation and returned a grim verdict. Nigeria is on the edge uh, and the brink and all hands must be on the deck to save the country. Consequently, the leaders say they are returning to the trenches to halt the free fall into the abyss. Leaders of the group who spoke at its maiden briefing held via Zoom include former presidential candidate Professor Pat Utomi and former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Alaji Gali Umar Abba. Apart from his speech, Professor Utomi told reporters that they could no longer afford to stay in their comfort zones because we are at the stage of if we die, we die. His words exactly, and the NCF is a child of necessity, he added. It is clear that our country is drifting badly. The executive branch and legislative branch seem to be confused over what their roles are. And joining us live now is Pa Uma Eleazu, elder statesman. Uh, good to have you, Pa Uma. How are you? I am very well. Thank you for asking. How are you too? I'm fine. Now, let's go into the... Thank you. Great to know that you are fine. Now, you were recently mentioned by Dr. Pat Otomi as playing a central role in the Back to the Trenches movement, if it may be termed that way. Why have you chosen to do this and at this time? Well, um, as you said in the intro, This country is moving towards the brink, and it behoves all men of goodwill to do whatever they can to stop the drift. So people are rising up everywhere and complaining that things are bad. But it is not enough to see problem and recognize that there's a problem. This is the time to start looking for solutions. And some of us will sit down and think out what the solutions should be. And not only that, how to implement it. Because if you give solutions and it's not implemented, nothing happens. So when they say going back, going down into the trenches. It means that it's not you know, writing articles and posting or writing letters and to the president. People will do whatever it takes to implement what will stop the drift. Hmm. Right. Some might term it a hostage situation of strong men or strong people over what should be strong institutions. What's your diagnosis of the Nigerian problem in a nutshell? No, we are not talking about strongening. As I said, when you say government is going to do something, it is not the president who is going to do it. It is the institutions that are under the presidency that will do it. For example, the issue of teen corruption. It is not when you have people who are dressed like masquerades, carrying guns, Badging into people, so that is not fighting corruption. If you have institutions that have put down the rules, like the due process law that we have, or in the old days, the financial instructions that state step by step how a contract is given, how it is approved, how it is monitored. Everything is in this. Now, if the institutions do their work, the strong institutions will stop the corruption. But if you just sit down and appoint policemen and give them guns and say, go and fight corruption, that is strong men. And the institutions are weak. You have uh, uh, agencies have no auditors, internal audit to see how things are going. And then we just come to the TV, tell us that, oh, 833 million uh, uh, has been stolen from this or that agency. 
where were the auditors, internal auditors of that agency? What is the auditor general of the country doing? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about strong institutions, we are saying that if those people who are man these things cannot do it, then let them go. And then we bring in some people who can do the things that it ought to be. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that it is but not... But going back into trenches now means we have to go back and look at it foundations. Mm -hmm. All right. You the mentioned... foundation that was laid for this country, that we have deviated completely from it. And that is what has created the problem. All right. You mentioned earlier that it's not going to be now about writing articles, posting on social media, or, you know, all of that. It's going to be action. But how would the documents you are drafting deal with this problem, you know, and set us back on the right track to wholesome national development? Well, it is not me alone, you know, drafting. I have ideas. Somebody else have ideas. We pull the ideas together. Mm -hmm. And then say step one, step two, step three, step four. These are things that need to be done if we are going to get for a brink. All right, um, I, I do believe you stay with us, um, but let me ask again. What, what do you now envisage will be the response and what will be your projected plan uh, moving forward from this? Okay, I'll give you one example of the sort of thing that I have been looking at. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, please, go ahead. I can hear you, sir. I can okay. hear you. Um, there is a disconnect between the people who are our elected leaders and the people who elected them. After every election, the leaders move to Abuja. They don't visit their constituencies or only go there if somebody died. And like they have this COVID-19, most of, of the elected representatives, they are all in Abuja. Now, you cannot be in Abuja and know the problems are in your constituency. Look at what is happening in the North West. That of the North East wind. How many times have the senators and the members of the House elected from that area gone down to see what's really going on and come back to the House and bet what is to be done? So they are going to talk with realities of coming that first of all, we have to get the ground to know what the people are representing are thinking. All right. Um, if I may... That was just the first step. Okay. If I may just ask a follow-up question on um, the NCF. We are aware that um, the leader, Umar uh, Naabba, has been um, invited by the DSS today in Abuja. How are you concerned about this invitation? Well, if it's an invitation, you go and hear what you want to say. It is, I'm, I'm not worried about it. They said, if you see something, I think it was like Muhammad that said so. If you see something, say something. Now somebody sees something and says something and then you invite. Maybe they want to know more in advance what is being planned. And that's why they've invited, he will go and tell as much as he can. 
So right now, I'm not worried about it because after he has told them what we want to do, as far as he knows, they will leave him and he'll cut. Right. Uh, before I let you go, I'm just wondering, wh why do you expect that this move, I mean, the whole agenda of the NCF front, uh, the NCF rather, will succeed where efforts such as the National Conference appeared to have failed? What's, what difference is this going to bring to the table? Which National Conference? The National Consultative Front. What difference is it going to bring from all the things we've heard, we've talked about in this nation, all the conferences, all the uh, workshops, all the things that we had talked, our leaders have done in the past to bring a way forward and have seemingly failed? What's the difference that the National Consultative Front is going to bring? Well, I'm not going to let out the kite. Why not? When we start, yeah, because it's still in the planning stage. I'm afraid we have lost. Um, we are not going to. We are looking at situations. We are looking at the constitution. What needs to be done to the constitution? We have been talking about restoring. Everybody say restructure. How do you go about restructuring? If you want to restructure this country, somebody has to sit down and say what needs to be done. And all the people we elect, they're all sitting in the uh, Senate and in the House of Representatives. Lawan said when he came as Senate President, oh, we are not here to be chasing this. We are here to approve whatever the president brings. Rubbish. That's not why he was Senate president. It means he has not read the Constitution, and he doesn't know his job as a senator. All right, Pa Umba. These are the kind of issues, of issues that we are looking at. Why do we have a Senate that will sit down there and the president is going beyond his powers. And they don't call him to order and say, Mr. President, the law does not allow you to do it. Mm -hmm. I I'm aware. That is the kind of issues we are looking at. I'm aware that you are also part of the redrafting of our constitution. Do you think that there is need to take, you know, make some amendments in the constitution for us to move forward as a nation? Yeah, well, people just say you are part of drafting. The drafting constitution is not an easy thing. During Absalami's period, we did what he called the Constitution Debating Committee, in which he brought out the draft of the actual Constitution, and they were to be debated around the country so as to know what to do. But it so happened that there were not even enough copies to give to those who were called to do it, not to talk about the people in the country. You debate an issue you have not understood. In any case, the various committees were sent out to various zones. In fact, it was that constitution that first mentioned this idea of having zones. And I led it that went to the south, east and south, south. And people were saying, please, what we need is to go back to the 1963 Constitution. And that 1963 had stipulated relationships between the center and the uh, federated units. Mm. Even people who went to the Northwest came back with a recommendation that we should go back to the parliamentary system and leave the presidential system. And then everything was collected and went to Nicky Toby, who was the man. He was a judge. I mean, he was not a professor of law. Mm. And 
he and one Yadudu, they now sit down as like as to drop almost every recommendation that came from the various places that we went, did not see the lot of them. Hmm. I'm afraid. They simply wrote down what I wanted to put in their bachelor concern and promulgated as a decree. Hmm. And then said that we, the people, said, as soon as I saw it, I said, not me. I'm not part of the we. Hmm. I mean, thank you for that clarification, but we have to most definitely bring you back to have a whole conversation on uh, around the Constitution, but we are pressed for time, and this is just all that we can take. I want to say thank you so very much, uh, Pa Uma Elazu, Elder Statesman, for your contributions on the breakfast this morning. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me.